Shabbos. It's almost time. And usually this is a time that fills me with excitement. It's a time when my kids start obsessing about which costume to wear. When we start obsessing about a novel new idea from the Shlach And it's time for me to crack out my Megillah from the cupboard, open it up and practice. Practice reading for the major event, the reading of the Megillah on the night and the day of Purim. But this year is different. My first feeling is not that sense of excitement, but a sense of shock. Wow, it's been a year. A year of COVID-19, a year of schools and jobs closed, a year of political upheaval. In short, a year of chaos. And now, the election is over, the vaccine is out, Schools and jobs are open, but everyone is cordless. We've gone from a state of chaos to a state of temporary readjustment. It's like the early hours of the morning, waiting for the dawn after a very long and dark night. So the question is, where in Torah, our handbook for life, do we find precedent for this? And what wisdom can we glean to help inform us how best to respond today. It shouldn't surprise us that in fact, that's exactly what happens in this week's Parsha. Us Jews back in Egypt, we really went through a roller coaster and the plagues took an entire year, during which time we had to redefine ourselves as a people. And after that, we ran into the desert, we were chased down by our previous slave masters and then we crossed the sea on dry land. After all of that chaos, we found ourselves readjusting to a temporary state. We were an entire nation living in the desert. We had left Egypt, but we had not yet come to Israel. Chaos followed by a temporary readjustment. So what did we do? What lessons can we glean? So I think we can summarize it in three main points. The first thing is to notice just how frantic we became as a people whenever a basic need of ours seemed to be missing, be it bread, be it water. It's understandable that we panicked, but it was one, you know, the golden highlights of our time spent in the desert. It's important to recognize just how intrinsic and vital it is to look after our basic physical needs. We need to make sure that we're eating enough that we're sleeping enough, that we maintain and build a structure of good self-care. That's number one. Number two is what happened next. Along came Amalek, a vicious enemy, and attacked us. And the Gemara is very clear why. It's because we lacked somewhat in our learning of Torah. As important and vital as it is for us to maintain our physical needs, it's equally important for us to maintain our spiritual needs, make sure we're getting our basic spiritual needs met. Just like food and water are the nutrition for our body, Torah is a nutrition for our soul. And a daily dose of Torah is essential. That's number two. And number three, the next event we read in the Torah, along comes Yisrael, Moshe's father-in-law. And he gives him advice. Moshe, you cannot judge every case. Moshe was trying to maintain the status quo. He wanted to keep things the way they were, but it wasn't possible. We have to avoid making that mistake. Things right now are different, and we have to heed the advice of Yisrael. We have to focus on the most important items on our plate and invest our energies into those. If we do so, we can be successful. Those are the three things. If, with Hashem's help, we make sure we are getting our basic physical needs, we make sure we are getting our basic spiritual needs, and we focus our energies on the most important items before us, then with Hashem's help, just like then, our people proceeded through the experience, having grown from it, so too we can proceed through this experience and grow for it, and reach our final destination, Eretz Yisrael. Wishing you 